Luca here. All right, it's allergy season, so I'm a bit congested today. Uh, but we're going to push through and make a mess. So, a uh, beautiful mess, hopefully. <laughs> the colors I am using today. I have uh, Liquitex Basics in Quinacridone Magenta. That is going to be my background slash base coat color. I have here... Uh, this little piggy pigment in Unicorn. Uh, this is a really cool color shifting pigment. There's some pinkish purple in there with the blue. So I thought that that might be a nice complement with these colors. I have Artist's Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue. That used to be one of my favorite colors and I haven't used it in ages. Uh, this color here is a mix of 50% satin enamel, uh, deco art, Americana decor, satin enamels, and pure white, and Amsterdam turquoise blue. So it's half and half of those. Um, hopefully that will sell. Uh, the mm, that jar has been open for a bit sometimes. Uh, when it sits for a while, it loses a bit of its cell making potency, but we'll see what's gonna happen. These colors will look great together regardless of what happens. So that uh, should still work out. The pigment, how I mixed that. I put some Josonia gloss varnish in the bottom of the cup, just enough to cover the bottom and added the pigment to that um, made a little slurry and then added some of uh, uh, golden um, the gel the matte this is the matte gel um, and this thickens it up uh, so I add this to make it more like the consistency of a tube paint and then I add the Floetrol to that so these paints are mixed one part paint two parts Floetrol that's pretty much the mixture there. Um, some of them I did wind up having to thin a bit with some water until I got the consistency I was looking for, which is, this is about a two on my consistency scale. It is making a mound, but it disappears pretty quickly. Makes a nice thin, even stream off of my stick. That is what you're looking for. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube. Gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint, brand, color, consistency, the recipe, and of course the technique. All of the things that I can't fit onto a card. This is the painting in that video. This box here contains a tip for this particular technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in that painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors, mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. A quick note, but an important one, when you are mixing pigments, please wear a mask. Um, when I have these studio lights going and I'm mixing these pigments, no matter how careful I am, I see little bits of it floating up into the air. If you are not wearing a mask, you will inhale some of that. And when that gets into your lungs, it does not come out. So please <laughs> protect yourself. Wear the mask. I know it's uncomfortable, but you only need it while uh, while you're mixing that. And, you know, but please, 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 safety first. Okay, I'm going to put about two ounces of my base color in my cup. And laying down my base coat, you will see I have already covered the edges. Um, 
That is uh, extra handy when you are mixing thin the way that I do. It may not give you the best coverage on the edge. And these canvases, these round canvases are puckered on the side. And if you don't cover them first, they will not get covered. Um, that is just the nature of the puckers. So I give them a cover first. I will come back and hit that edge again before um, I spin because the edges do seem to dry up rather quickly. And we want to lay down a base coat because that is going to make our paints move around a lot easier. I feel like I need a bit more, it feels a little thin. And I am reserving some of that paint to go into the top of my pour cup. It seems like a round canvas would be easier to, to uh, cover, but it can be a little tricky. Okay, so I'll just take my finger and give this a swipe around the side, moisten up those edges. Again, I will come back and touch those up, but you definitely want to Make sure on these round canvases that you cover the edges first. Do yourself a favor. All right, going to put some paint in a cup. Always check your consistency before adding your paint to the cup. Sauce may thicken upon standing. I'm going to pour the pigment first. And I poured that kind of gently. I wasn't doing the pouring high to sink and churn. I will be doing that with the next two. Again, check the consistency. Always. That did thicken up just a bit. So I'm gonna add a couple of drops of water. Okay, now I'm going to pour this from up high. And now for the satin enamel blend. Again, from up high, I want that to sink and churn and make it to the bottom. And now for the remainder of my background color. So the satin enamel paints are matte. Matte paints are hydrophobic and they push away the other paints. So that is what causes them to create cells. Gonna pop, oh, can I get it? Can I get, no. Get the schmutz as soon as you see it. 
pop these bubbles. Okay, going for a spiral here. I'm going to pour quickly and spin slowly, doing my best to stay in the center. That looked like a blob of something. Didn't like the way that looked at all. I don't want to spin too quickly because I don't want this to look like a ring pour. I want it to have more of a spiral effect. As I get towards the end of the cup, I will spin slower because it's coming out slower. keeping in mind that the center is going to be the focal point. So I want to be careful. And whatever the last color that I put in when I do that uh, pouring from up high, a bit of that ends up in the bottom of the cup. Enough for me to create a focal point. And so that was the satin enamel. And I like to do a one and a half turns if I can get it. because that is the Fibonacci ratio. Ooh, 10 on the dismount. Now, something is happening there. I said that there was a big blob of something. You can see it is distorting. I don't know if it's something I can grab. or if it's just a thick hunk of paint or something. So this is not centered, obviously. Um, but what is important is that the center is centered. The rest will take care of itself. If I can get that center in the center, We're good to go. All right, going to pop the bubbles. This technique creates a lot of bubbles, but that can work to your benefit because those bubbles can become cells. And as they sit and grow, they become bigger. And then when I spin it out, they get even bigger. So that is the beauty of a straight pour. If we are patient, we can get some pretty cool cells. I think it's just like a thick hunk of paint, maybe. I mean, there's a chance that's going to get spun off anyway, but
Okay, more bubbles, more bubbles, pop the bubbles, and you will see whenever I pop these bubbles, some cells come up. It's bringing the paint from the layers below. And again, because it's hydrophobic, it's going to push the other paints away and those cells grow and they will get even bigger once I spin this out. Man, there's some really cool stuff happening right here, which I'm most definitely going to lose. Sometimes the coolest stuff happens on the edge. That is just how it goes. That's why I use a base coat that is, one of the reasons I use a base coat that is the same color as my background color. It gives me the option to uh, keep the negative space if I so chose. Not gonna work out so much on a round. Oh, well, I could, but not today. More bubbles. And again, the longer I let this sit, the more cells come up, the better because they will get stretched out. Now I could spin this and still get cells um, after the fact, but they would all be pretty uniformly sized and shaped to a degree. Those pop-up cells have a tendency to kind of be pretty um, uniform. And I like the boulder effect. I like that 3D look that I get from allowing the cells to develop before I stretch them. Okay, I've got some nice cell action going on here. I think I'm gonna get ready to spin this out. I don't need it to be fully covered before I spin it out, but I do like for enough cells to develop to give me that nice 3D effect. So, alrighty. Let's do this. Oh. Almost forgot, I do want to touch up these sides because it will impede the process. It won't spin off uh, quite as evenly if I don't make sure that these sides are Uh, covered with some fresh paint. If it's dry, it will resist. So if you have a dry spot and the rest of it's wet, it'll slide over easily where it's wet and then resist where it's dry and not go over the edge. And then you kind of don't have an even flow over the side. Okay, I think that's good. All right. Let's do this. We don't have to spin it fast. It will get where it's going to go. That is... The nature of paint, if you've had a painting that was not level as it was drying, you know how much paint can move over time. So 
So there is no need to be flinging this all the way across the room. Okay, there's a little bit of resistance here. It's a little bit of a dry spot. Just going to oh, here too. If I want, I can actually slide my canvas a little bit in the direction that I want to spin off more. So here's that little funky area. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Still can't see whatever that was, but okay, so far looking great. Debating, do I want to spin more off? I kind of like having uh, some of the magenta showing through. I do know I will get more cells popping up along those, along here. I can see the small ones forming. I could keep spinning this and just have this whole thing be what's happening with the center here. But I do I do think I want to try to keep some of that magenta there. Because this is all going to keep growing and expanding and there might not be very much magenta left in there. Okay. I'm going to leave this be. I'm going to let it sit and do whatever it's going to do. And then I will bring you in for a close up back in a few. Okay, here it is. Looks like I'll be keeping some of that magenta on the edge. Yay. Some really cool. Look at that. How cool. Some of these. Oh, there's jumping cameras. Some of these uh, cells are super cool. I love these, like, cell within a cell action going on. The camera's going crazy here try to get that under control but there it is very happy with the glow on this piece yeah so there it is I hope you learned something I hope you enjoyed Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Make sure you click that bell. Uh, YouTube made some changes, and if you don't click the bell, you will not be notified when I put up 
new content. I don't understand the point of subscribing if they're not going to notify you. There are some really neat looking cells going on. Uh, check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. My affiliate links, DecoArt being one of them, you can get the coupon codes in the description box for my affiliates. Uh, also, there's a discount code for the DecoArt. Check that out. Also in the description box, you will find links to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale. You will also find the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. All right. Well, I think that's it. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.